Dan McCafferty talks about losing a bandmate when he was in Nazareth, the great Daryl Sweet, their original drummer. I'm John Bowden from Rocky Street Music. Daryl Sweet was a kick-ass drummer and he was with Nazareth for all of the hits. But he was on their tour bus and he started feeling kind of strange. We talked to Dan McCafferty and Pete Agnew about losing their great drummer. I talked to the band April Wine uh, the first time was right after oh. uh, after Daryl passed, and uh, yeah. each one Miles and, and uh, uh, the other guys. I can't. They all talked about Daryl with such admiration and shock that you know one day you're alive and the next day shock to the band. But for the grace of God, go I. You never know what's around the corner, so enjoy your life. But try not to hurt yourself too much. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> always yeah. advisable. Yeah, of course. Came as a, as a huge shock to them, and it's true. I mean, we you go out, you go out to play. We went out to start a tour, you know, the, uh, the night before. Daryl and I went to a Japanese, one of these Ichiban type places, you know. We went there, and everything was fine. And in the morning, everything was fine. And then by you know by four o'clock in the afternoon, he was gone. It was very, very, very short, big, big shock, and just hard. Just at the time, it was devastating. You know? No, I don't. Yeah. I, I don't mean to sound morbid, but it, it, it is. And tales can be told, and sometimes they're not right. Is it true he, he he walked off the bus and fell down? Is that true? It was an outdoor gig we were going to be playing. Uh, it was like a kind of festival kind of thing. It was in a. Uh, it was a. It was a, a, a kind of sports park. And mm-hmm. um, we parked the bus at the back because of the Indianapolis. The, the, I'll tell you what it was the Kentucky. The Kentucky Derby was on, so we couldn't get hotels anywhere. And we we, we came up from Indianapolis. We played the night before. Well, well, we'd arrived. We didn't play there. We stayed there, and we drove up to Kentucky, and and uh, we couldn't get hotels there. So we were just going to play the gig and then head away in our bus overnight to someplace else. So we were all hanging out in the bus where the crew were setting up. And he was hanging out, and I was up the back lounge, and he was at the front, and he and Dan was up the front, and he he, he got he started to get a funny kind of you know started taking a funny kind of turn, so then he started you know sort of going funny, so uh, Dan got the jumped off, and they got the medics that were all there, they happened to be there for the gig, you know, so it was good there the ambulance and everything there, and so they walked him off the bus, and then when he just got down to the bottom of the steps, he collapsed, you know, right. that was it. But when we had you know. You would always worry if you'd have been if this had happened and nobody had been there. You'd always thought for the rest of your life, could we have done something? But when it happened to him, there was two guys there. Was a there was there was a the guys there with all the uniforms, the oxygen tanks, the defibrillators. There, wow. everything was right there when it happened. So you know they couldn't have done any more. You know, they, in fact, they kept him alive. You know, I remember the first time I heard the band was uh, Razamanez. And my first right. thought, my first thought of, and I know that wasn't your first pick at the can, but in Canada, it was the first time I heard. And I remember my first thought was thinking, this is the most rockish of all rock bands. This is like the most kick-ass <laughs> song I've ever heard in my life. It was always constantly right. going to be that fast, right? Well, we, 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 at that point in our life, we were trying to be the most kick-ass song band in the world. You know, we really were trying to, you know, balls out, you know, let's, let's go for this, you know. And uh, and we did, you know, and that was that was a good time for us, and and and, and it laid a lot of, uh, you know, it gave us a lot of maps to follow, you know, yeah, yeah, in our career after that, because we were allowed to do, because of the variety in our music, we could we could do things, we could do Love Horse, and we could do Rise of Manas, and we could do Son of a Bitch, and we could, you know, we, you know, we were allowed to do soft stuff and hard stuff, and in between. So we were lucky that way. Which was lucky for us because we, we, couldn't, we couldn't have been a band that did Razmanaz, son of Razmanaz, uh, grandson of Razmanaz. I mean, the band couldn't have handled that. I mean, the people like that would just have I mean, no, can't do this anymore. Yeah, yeah. You can't have a bit of variety, you know. Of course. When you look at the uh, Last Testament, by the way, is was the name of it... it, it, it you have more solo albums than you because that, that, that title seems cryptic to me. Well, it's, the last testament was, it's, it's sort of tongue in cheek, but not, if you know what I mean. I mean, I just turned 73 two days ago. How many guys are going to get signed at 73 to make another solo album? You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but I wouldn't mind doing last testament too, trust me. Or three yeah. and four as well. But, oh, um, I would... oh, right, there's plenty of songs. I'll, I'll still be writing. And I, in fact, I'm talking to Carl at the moment because he's 
he's off on a solo project, so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to help him I'm out with some lyrics as, as we speak. We'll have more from Dan McCafferty coming up next week. Make sure you comment on our video, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. Share them on social media. We'd appreciate that. And buy a t-shirt to help support our channel. Links in the description of this video right at the very top. New Testament is the brand new Dan McCafferty album. We'll have links to that as well. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music.